on the real. On Girl Chat, Tupac's love letters. When he said, come with me, I was like, where? <laughs> where are we going? And this Earth Day, the reel's going green with cash. Time to play Trivial Purse News. Yes. Yes. Plus zero waste. It's possible. It's the most reusable show you have ever seen. Then love your hair. It's OK. Girl, you look great just the way that you are. The real. today. Yes. yes. All right. She's been so good to us. We got to give us some love back, right? Yes. yes. All right, party people. Also, Passover starts tonight, and we hope everybody has a good Passover and enjoy their celebrations. Yes. All right. So now that we done got that out of the way, ah, 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 <laughs> it's time for some good old girl chat, yes. baby. Yes. And let me tell y'all something. It's so juicy today right. yes. because it has something to do with an old made up boyfriend of mine. Really? Yes. Really? I said made up. Okay. Oh, so, made up. Yes, okay. I'm talking okay. about my boyfriend in my head, Tupac Shakur. Ooh, okay. love him. Yes. Oh, this All right, is now, cute. Tupac. <laughs> now, everybody know, so know him for being one of the one of the, um, the best lyricists on the planet, right? Yes. And great All right, eyelashes. we do know that, right? But did you know that he wrote love letters too? Yes, my baby journey is romantic in these streets. Yeah. Yes, a 1988 love letter said that Tupac Shakur pinned uh, to a piano playing girl that he called Beethoven in his high school drama class, oh. and it has been discovered, and it is up for sale. Wow. Yes. Yes. According to TMZ, the letter is being sold by memorabilia dealer moments in time for, guess what, y'all? $35,000 oh, for wow. every penny. Yes, and it's Worth so it. sweet. Like when I saw it, like it even comes with like drawn hearts and the eyes, the letter eyes are actual eyes, like my emojis. No. That's what it's meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, so Tim, has the best yes. eyes. listen, you're like me. We love love letters, we right? We do. I want you to read this love letter because okay. it's some um, poetic justice. Yeah. <laughs> you like that spin of the word? Yes. <laughs> I do. Okay. Read it, oh, read this it. Is so sweet. Oh. Okay. He writes, oh, <laughs> dear Beethoven, I felt compelled to write to you. I can't really explain it, but I really feel good vibes from you. I would have never guessed that you and I would be friends. I want you to know that you can tell me anything if you ever need a shoulder to cry on. <sighs> you can cry on mine. <laughs> and you will soon find out. I do not spare words. I say what I feel. Ooh, yes. So, if something I say scares you, please don't panic, because I tend to get over emotional. Love that. <laughs> it's like I've known you for years. We have so much in common. We both had heartbreak, and we both adore candles. I do, too. What else could I ask for? See you tomorrow. <laughs> Beethoven, for eternity, Tupac Shakur. P.S. My phone number is 332-4725. Uh, How cute is that? Yeah. Tamar's making out with herself. <laughs> You're making out with yourself, Tay-Tay? I was dancing. Oh, oh, okay. I was dancing to the beautiful lyrics. Ooh. Ooh, let me get myself that together. That was so beautiful, Tay-Tay. So Tay -tay. <sighs> <laughs> okay, Adrian, you're just like us. You're yes. a hopeless romantic. I found hope. Yes. Now, what do you think about this Tupac R&B love letter, honey? He blessed me this morning. I'm not going to lie. In the words of Ja Rule, every thug needs a lady. Yes, <laughs> I just feel like there's nothing.
nothing better than a gangster type dude with a big heart. Yeah. Who has a soft spot for you. I don't want you being all emotional with everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think it's dope when you find somebody that can be that way just with you. Yeah. Absolutely. That you find that little soft spot in them. And, ooh, I think there's nothing more uncool than a man that's emotionally unavailable. Yeah, that's not here for it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. here for it. I have yeah. time to break yeah. you yeah. all the way down yeah. to I'm the memory. I'm not here to be therapy for you because somebody didn't hug you as a child. That's yeah. not my that's job. That's not my, yeah. that's not my no, place. Stay yeah. in my place. Stay in my life. I think that's the sexiest thing is that when you listen to Tupac, you know he's a sensual, talented man, but you would never, I wouldn't have pictured me neither. that much romance. I, I do. I have. I mean, the, when he said, come with me, I was like, where? <laughs> where are we going? You know, but I, I just, I hope that woman called that number. He put his, like, I hope she called. I would she still called. dial it today. You, you, me wouldn't she you called. call, Lonnie? Oh, yeah, yes, definitely. Girl, right? When I was in college, I had a guy this many moons ago make me a mixtape. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, on a cassette? Yeah. On a cassette? Yeah, yeah. on the cassette. That, that. And at the yep. time, I thought it was corny till I no. started listening to yeah. the songs. Yeah, and yeah, had that key sweat yes. on there. Yes. Nobody. Yeah. OK. Oh. But you're ready. But oh. you're ready. I was like, that's the guy. Well, remember when that's they would, the guy. Remember when they, when they would press record and you could hear yeah. when they press stop? Yeah. And yeah. Try to start it again? Yeah. It was so good. Because you couldn't edit good. it. No, yeah. you couldn't edit it. You know what? It took a lot because he did both sides of the cassette. He did. Oh. He did. 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 He you do know why he gave it to you. I know why. why. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I don't know why. Why? why. If the guy give you like a, yeah. a, like a cassette tape of love song. Yeah. He expects you he to play it. He wants to love. Yeah, he wants to love, oh. you know? Which actually, to me, I still have it. It's an old You do? I still have it because. Are you a hoarder? You have everything. <laughs> yeah, you're a hoarder. You got that to your hoarder. But I just think that when people do creative stuff like that, like writing love letters yeah. and, and, and making tapes and mm -hmm. things, that's more valuable yeah. than, you know, the material yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. so true. Wait, wait, like wait, that. don't say that. Wait, wait. Because they put their heart it into it. No, actually, oh, okay. time. I agree with that because when Adam and I broke up before we got married, we broke up for about a year. Mm -hmm. You guys, he wrote me the sweetest letter. It said how much he loved me. He said we were going to be great together. He was like, I wish you the best. You guys, still to this day, I kept that letter in my purse for, for, for years, and now it's up on our wall in our, in our bedroom. Oh. It's all like torn apart. That. Yeah. So it's just a little reminder, you know? I love exactly. it. I'm like, you we're cancers, though. I know. We've I love that. Sentimental. Very sentimental, sentimental moments. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know who can write me a love letter any day? Who, who? girl? Any of GQ's most stylish men alive 2016. Yes. Come on, I want to know. This year's honorees are in their May issue, available now, and they include actor Ryan Reynolds, uh -huh. rappers Drake, and Future. So mm -hmm. now they all look very, very handsome and well put together, but it oh, got Jesus. me thinking about how a well dressed man <laughs> is something to really appreciate, don't you think? Oh, yes. So, Lonnie, huh? what do you think a man can wear to make him look stylish and sexy? Baby oil and Timberlands. Come on. <laughs> I'm with you on the Timberlands. Yes. Okay. The question is, no shade. This Some is the question. No, and this is just like a general question. <laughs> when did Future get so doggone fine? Like, what, in, what, ha what happened? <laughs> I like, think that, he was it, Maybe it's that picture. Good God almighty. <laughs> he is very stylish. Yeah. He looks amazing right there. First of all, he looks like his child. <laughs> yeah. But he looks amazing. I you better work. God, <laughs> men with good teeth? Yeah. Oh. Oh. It could be the teeth. Could be. Yo. Yeah, Pretty good teeth. Pretty teeth. Pretty teeth is everything. Yeah, because if those teeth was oh. jagged, he'd be it. jacked up. We'd be like, ooh, Ooh, that you know, would not like be that. Cute. Yeah, no. I love great teeth. So what do you think we're going to make other than right Tim's there. and baby oil? I don't think it's what a man wears. Yeah. I think it's how he wears yeah. it. That's yeah. true. Well, I love the things that men do when they, like, you know, when they Ow. adjust themselves. Who is doing this? Because Freddie Freddy is not doing this. No, Freddie's not. Freddie Freddy does it. Yeah. I, like, I like what Fre A40 does. A40 he does. does. Like, and what? Common. Common's real swagalicious, man. What does... He's <laughs> really cute. What does Freddie wear that you think is just Those sexiest? little ties. Yeah. Some yes, ties. I love his bolo ties because my man's a country boy. Yeah. And, and, and what I love, the, my favorite thing is when Freddie sits down and whenever, whenever he looks at me, he goes like this. 
Oh, <laughs> when he admires you. Yes, and I just love, I love what, when a guy tenderly touches his woman. Yeah. Because I, I don't know, boys that I dated back in pre-Jesus genie days yeah. were always like in other areas that are obvious, but when a guy touches the back of your ear or moves hair away from your face, I'm here like, for it. Oh, it's so or it's so romantic. Awesome. <laughs> oh, try that has nothing to do with what style, girl. No, speaking of style, mine's from Newark. Oh yes. In these streets, Tim's yes. are involved. Yes. And so Tim's are involved. Yes. Okay. Okay. So his thuggism is yes. involved. He's yes. got a little change with his thuggism. You know yes. what I mean? Like a right. coin and th I like coins and thuggism Thug. together. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, like, you oh used my. to rock polo, now you rock Ralph Lauren purple label. Yeah, I'm, I'm, here, I, for I'm it. here for. I mean, I I, I like the hoodies and yes. I, I, I yeah, and yes. I like jeans with no socks. I love that. <laughs> jeans. Jeans with no, and your ankle was not ashy? Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come I, on, say that ain't sexy. Not an ashy ankle. Oh my God. That, Mine is see, a lotion that and baby ankle? oil. Wait, it's true. When it's still shine, baby oil. With Emberlins, ankles. Mine, you guys, you know mine. Can what? Converse. Can you get, what is it? I know. I was going to say Converse. Converse, but even more than that, a man in a suit. Yes. Oh, yes. I love a yes. man in a suit. Suit. With no socks on. Yeah. With no socks on? Yes, no socks. You gotta expose no the socks ankle. On. No, you guys, every time, no. every time, if you really look carefully, <laughs> no. if you really look carefully, every time we have a male guest and we do our interviews, me and Tay, because we sit on the end, we always like sit there, nice to meet you, sit down, and thanks for being here. <laughs> you look at the shoes? <laughs> I got We look out. at those ankles to see if they're moist, yes. Okay. Yeah. Nice and moisturized. What you okay. think, Adrian? Okay, so I used to think that like a well tailored suit was like lingerie for men. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was so sexy. I love it. And now I kind of think what makes a man's I'm style scared. sexy what? I know is, me too. is personal style. Yeah, like, okay, I think maybe style. not trend setting, like, oh, they're not doing what's in style, but yo, if they can pull off whatever they have on and they they have their own little yeah. swag, swag to it. Swag to them, I think that's so peculiar. Yeah. And I like denim on denim. Oh, yes. denim on denim. denim. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Well, one Wear person. Wear ankles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because if you wear slip-on shoes, their ankles be exposed. Wait, can I mention just one because it's my biggest pet peeve? Okay. And Vince actually agreed with me the other day. The one thing, I'm sorry, boys. I'm sorry, guys out there if you wear this, but the one thing I can't find hot on a man, flip-flops. I uh, love flip-flops. No. Really? Really? I love them. If it's toes are done. I, no. I, I'm, I'm a Malibu that. girl. I went to Pepperdine. Outside it's those of the beach. It, has, it can't be a, a Birkenstock. Oh. It can't be that. What's I a love um, Jesus, like, like if you Jesus, Easter like play, really, and the Jesus, it's Jesus sandals. Play. Yes, I like, I like a Jesus sandal. Y'all probably don't know rainbow sandals though. Do y'all know rainbow sandals? Like the store rainbow? No, rainbow sandals. <laughs> Rubber ones. People at Pepperdine know rainbow <laughs> sandals with some jeans oh. where you see their ankles with the rainbow sandals. That's hot. Just saying. Okay. We agree to disagree here at this table on the real. Exactly. <laughs> well, one person that's always dressed to the nines is Mariah Carey, all right? Yeah. Yeah. The powerhouse vocalist Mariah Carey was photographed recently at a meet and greet, and a few of her fans showed up with an interesting sign for her. The sign says, still don't know her, which references to a 2008 interview where Mariah was asked about J-Lo, and she said, didn't know her. Well, earlier this year, TMZ caught up with her and asked her again, and she said, still don't know J-Law. Now, if you haven't seen it, take a look. Mariah, can I one autograph? Hi, how are you? How are you? You look so amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. What do you think about people still referencing I don't know her all these years later? I still don't know her. Ah. Ah. Tamara, what do you think about this? Has the beef gone too far? I mean, have you ever let a few just go on too long? I can't personally, because I think after a certain point, it's just silly. I mean, are they actually joking with each other? They you're Mariah, I, I you're Mariah like, Carey a fan. I am a huge. Yes. And I love Jay, too. Yes. However, I just honestly feel like she don't know her. <laughs> no, she not. No, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. With you. Let me I'm break it you. down to the ground, OK? Just because we see somebody on TV every week and we listen to them Say on it. the radio yes. station does not mean we know somebody, yes. OK? We know yes. of them. Yes. 
Okay? You might know their name. You might know their children. Is that what they mean? But I think that's what Mariah means. What like, about like, you, stop Adrian? Asking me ab- like, stop asking me about this woman when you know Come on, that, that exactly. maybe they don't, they're not on the best of terms. But stop asking me about her. I, I don't know her, so don't ask me Come about on, her. Come on, somebody. I think maybe that's what she's going. But this breaks my heart either way because I love Mariah Carey and I love J-Lo. So it's like having two of your best friends in your why head that get along. Why don't they just do a tour together? For what? Right? Oh, my God. No, 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 you're on to something. No. That would be... That's yes, like that would be hours. amazing. That would be an awesome tour. Puppies and cupcakes coming together. No. Yeah, they, they, they both no. had shows in Vegas, so you technically yeah. go see one one yeah, night and the other. Show. Yeah, Damn, but don't go on the same night. That's a long okay, night, y'all. You don't know what you're asking for. It'll be one amazing night. Right? You got this. I, I got the answer. Okay. okay. They both need to come on the real. Yeah. That's what they need to do. Girl chat topic, we thought we'd ask for some help from our friends over at KTVU Fox 2 in San Francisco. (laughs) We've got our boy Mike Me back over there to fill us in. Hey, Mike. What's up, ladies? I'm telling you, I know I'm having a busy day, but I was saying to someone else, I heard a group of beautiful women wanted to chat with me, so just like high school, I raised the hand, and here I am. It's an honor. I love the show. Uh, now, Mike, you and I are all about the Bay Area. Yes. Come That's on, right. Now. Are you holding it down out there? Oh, you know I'm holding it down. I mean, from one native to another native, I love it. But yeah, I'm holding it down. In fact, I'm running with it, I think, because it's all about cocktails and dreams. I'm living a dream out here, growing up in San Francisco. Uh, I've got my wife, I've got my beautiful children, five and three. Now, Mike, I know you have a topic that one of our viewers in San Francisco wanted us to talk about. Yes, yes. And I want to look down because I want to get it right. Uh, And this is from Ashley Day Merveau, who wrote in and said, I want to talk about the only thing that truly matters. Dramatic pause which is the McDonald's in Missouri that's offering all-you-can-eat fries. What? What? Oh, that's juicy, Mike. It might even make me hungry. That is juicy. I'm in. I'm I'm so hungry, even though I'm on a diet. Thank you for sharing that topic with us. You're welcome, baby. That is a juicy one. We're going to run with that. Bye, Bye, Mike. Bye, Bye, Mike. Mike. See you, ladies. Oh my that God. was an awesome topic. Wow. Now, Tamar, yes. what do you think <laughs> about those bottomless McDonald's fries? Are you into it? I'm so into it. As a matter of fact, it's the best invention since hair gel. It's like the best <laughs> ever. It's like the essential to life. Like everybody needs hair gel to, to put them edges down, yep. right? But everybody needs McDonald's french fries, especially <laughs> when they Hot. They yes. got that salt on it, a little Fresh. extra salt on it. And you get you some really good ketchup. You get you a little cocoa on the side. God is able. Yes, he <laughs> is able. <laughs> able. They're so good. Yes. They're, They're so good. good. When you were pregnant with Logan, I know when I was pregnant with yeah. both of my children, that's yeah. all I wanted. I loved it. So where were the all-you-can-eat fries yeah. then? I know. I don't but think I I'm going to pregnant again. How much is going to be, though? All you can All eat you can fries. Eat. How much is the coin? Eight dollars? Because I'm going oh. back eight times. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, a God, great that's question. That's true. The problem is, I'm on a diet. <laughs> fries are not in my diet plan. Oh, girl, we've been on diet since we've been 11 years old. Yeah. Child, please. We'll, we'll cheat and go, go to the gym later. Yeah. Because <laughs> these, sometimes, yeah. when you smell them, it's almost like you got to have that's them. So yeah. You will never get that smell out your nose. Yes. <laughs> and when I, when I used to uh, get out of high school, I used to get the fries put them in a, the brown paper bag from McDonald's, put two extra salt packets, because I like the salty, oh, shake it up like a yes. Polaroid picture, and split it with friends so you can share. And if you're a real G, you get the sauces from the chicken McNuggets, and you dip them in there. Sweet and sour. Oh, my God. You get the sweet and sour sauce, Orlani. Mm-hmm. Are you about that sweet and salty life? Oh, yeah. All the okay. Time. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, have any of you guys ever gotten the fries and a McFlurry? Yes, oh. you stuck your fries in that yes. Oreo McFlurry? Yes. It'll change your life, I tell you. We all know that when it comes to our hair, the struggle is real. Yeah. Do we work with what we got or try to change it? Today, we're learning to love our hair by putting some of your hairstyles to the test. This is Fix It or Flaunt It. Yeah. 
Did you know that 86% of U.S. women believe that media and society put a lot of pressure on women to have hair that looks a certain way? Even if you like your hair, there's still pressure to conform to what our society says is great hair. Right. Our hair can be so important to how we feel as women because growing up, I always wanted curly hair. So I just started getting perms because I was obsessed with that look. We ask our viewers to send in their hair questions so we can help them answer that all important question. Should you fix it or flaunt it? So let's hear from our audience, our first audience member. This is Frankie. Roll the tape. Hi, I'm Frankie, and I have a question. I have naturally curly hair, and when I go to a job interview, I feel the need to either straighten my hair or push it back in the bun in order to have like that professional look, and I'm wondering if that's necessary. Okay, we just heard from Frankie. So audience, what do you think? Should she fix it or flaunt it? You all think that she should flaunt it, right? Yeah! Well, let's see what she did. Frankie, come on out. Wow, she flaunted that yeah. thing. I was in awe. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was Frankie, how you feel about your curls now? Are you happy you flaunted them, girl? Yes, I yes. love it. You know, um, it's been a struggle sometimes when I have to go to like a job interview. Mm -hmm. I've been advised, especially for like corporate interviews, mm -hmm. to either straighten my hair or to push it back in a bun. And it's wow. good that I can actually rock it because it takes so long to straighten it. I'm yeah. so I'm glad. Like this is considered professional. I love, I love it. it. I love it. <laughs> Sweet. Me too. Everything. It looks it's so great. Cool. It's beautiful. Your hair is yeah. gorgeous. Okay, next we got a video from Kirsten. Let's hear her answer. My name is Kirsten and I'm a busy mom and I don't know what to do with my hair. Uh, I have natural hair and I feel like every time I detangle it, I lose so much hair and I don't want to damage it with relaxers or heat. But sometimes I wonder if it's easier if I had extensions or a wig. Okay, audience, what do you think? Should she fix it or flaunt it? Flaunt it! Okay, let's see if you're right. Come on out here, girl. Yeah! Girl, you look absolutely amazing, and you look like you feel really confident. Are you happy that you chose to flaunt it? Yes, I am very happy that I chose to flaunt it. I just, I feel like it fits me, mm -hmm. and it's so defined and bouncy. I just love it. <laughs> Is anything better than winning some extra cash? No. Exactly. So today, we're giving one lucky audience member the chance to do just that. It's time to play Trivial Purse Loose. <laughs> Tamara, how do they win the big bucks? Okay, here's the deal, A. One lucky audience member will have 30 seconds to answer as many pop culture trivia questions as they can. Each correct answer will earn them a chance to loot one of these purses. Yup. <laughs> okay, guys, each purse contains either money or something completely random we found in the bottom of Lottie's purse. And we know you've got some crazy stuff in there, Lonnie. Whatever, haters. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, I guess all we need now is our contestant. Mm -hmm. And guess who it's going to be? Marie DeLoya! <laughs> Now, are you current on your pop culture knowledge? Yes, I know what I'm talking about. You stay about. up on everything. I'm very confident. There we go. I like confidence. <laughs> confidence. Well, all right. I hope you are because it's about to go down. You ready? Yes. All right. Remember, every right answer is an opportunity to get some cash. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock. The time will start as soon as I finish the first question. Which singing competition had its final episode this year? American Idol. Finish this line. How many licks does it take to the get to get to the center of a uh, pop? How many Emmys did our show recently Four. get nominated for? Well, there you go. How many kids do Prince William and Duchess Kate Middleton Two. have? Which one of our hosts was nominated for a Grammy? 
Ten more. On what show is the character Cookie Lion? Uh, Empire. What is Kim Kardashian's son's name? Faith. Name one show that Shonda Rhimes created. Um, uh, um, Scandal. Which two superheroes? <laughs> Answered eight questions yeah. correctly. Yeah. 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 Eight purses to loot. I think that's the most, most we've ever had. Yeah. Girl. Now remember, whatever's inside, you get to keep. So go ahead and make your picks. Which eight will it be? Um, okay, she said one. Five. Um, let's go on four, one. Five. Four. Eight. Eight. Ten. Ten. How many? <laughs> you have three more. Um, Fifteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. 16 and twenty. And twenty. Now that's it. She's made her pick. Now let's just hope there's some money in there because yep. it's time to loot. You ready, girl? Yes. Yeah. Ladies, I'll call out the numbers and you know you'll see what's inside. Let's start with one. Number Come one. Out. Okay. Let's see. There. <gasps> Let's see. Let's see. What, 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 what is it? Buttons, Lonnie. Lonnie, what are you doing with buttons? What are you doing I with need buttons? My buttons. But Button up my pants. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you got some buttons. The next number will be number four. Number four. Let's see. Let's oh. see. We got. Oh, oh, what what? <laughs> You're already a winner. All right, we've got number five. Five. Okay. <gasps> Bam. 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 That, that's still a win in case she gets cut. We also have number eight. What's okay. the number eight? You've got that one, Jeannie. Eight right yep. here. It is. Lottie. <laughs> I like mustard. Well, all right. <laughs> we also have number 10, which is right next to it, Jeannie. Okay. Get some money. You getting all I my know. stuff. <laughs> she got $100. Okay, that's good. girl. Lonnie! <laughs> no! Well, Lonnie, what's in number 15, which is right in front of you? Number come on, 15? Lonnie. Show us the okay. money. Oh, I hope on, it's not something on. I mind. Come on, money, money, money. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! 150 bucks so far. She also picked number 16. What is it? What is All it? All right. What money, is money, it? Money, 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 money. No, no, no. You need okay. That's okay. You'll never, you'll never walk around with anything in your teeth. Yes. That's still a win. And finally, number 20, Tay. Girl. Uh, yeah! That is a total of $200. Yeah. So I'm going to open up this little purse that I get to loot. And here you go. 100 mm -hmm. 200 bucks, you guys. Earth Day is celebrated in 192 countries and is a reminder that we all should do our part to help keep our planet healthy and thrive. Yes, in honor of Earth Day, we wanted to be more mindful of our actions, so we each gathered up our trash from a day of taping here at The Real. Ladies, let's see your junk. Oh, gosh. Wow. Wow. Who has the most? Why is my Tamar? bag so big? No. Lonnie and Tay Tay. Now, what if we could reduce our trash to just one mason jar full a year? What? Look at this. That's yeah. the mini mason jar. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what our next guest does. She leads a zero-waste lifestyle, and all of her trash fits into this 16-ounce jar. Please welcome Lauren Singer. <laughs> Today, gorgeous Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. On. Oh, no, our pleasure. Now we must know how did you manage to fit a year's worth of garbage in that teeny? You got the mini mason jar <laughs> yes. to do. Yeah, that's almost four years actually. What? Wait, what? Almost four years. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. What qualifies as actual trash in the jar? 
things that can't be recycled or composted or reused. So basically everything in there is plastic. Mm. Wow. Now, what made you want to live this type of life? It's called a zero waste lifestyle. Exactly, yeah. For me, it started when I was an environmental studies major at NYU, and it wasn't until my senior year of college, I was taking this class, and this girl in my environmental studies class was bringing this big plastic bag full of food in a plastic clamshell and a plastic fork and knife and a plastic bag of chips and a plastic water bottle and she would eat everything and then just throw it all in the trash and I would look at her and be like what are you doing yeah right we're these environmental studies students and I was like you're the worst person ever ever, <laughs> ever. yeah it's hard not to judge them but yeah so no I was totally judgmental and then I went home one day after class and opened my fridge to make dinner and I saw that every single thing that I had in there was packaged in plastic and I was like wow, I'm really horrible, you know, because I had been so judgmental of this girl, mm -hmm. but I was just as bad. So mm -hmm. I made a decision in that moment to start reducing my plastic and then ultimately to go completely zero waste. Wow. So what was it like to adjusting to a waste-free lifestyle? Yeah, it's all, it's really easy. It's just baby steps, like little one-time things. So you change one thing and then I'm like, wow, that was so fun, that was so mm -hmm. easy. It's like a game, I'm gonna go to the next thing. I'm like, oh, I learned how to make toothpaste, awesome. Like, I'm gonna learn how to make lotion now. Or it's wow. like a really fun game. You make game. your own toothpaste. I make my own You make your own lotion. I make my own lotion. You're not ashy, so At that's all. good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it works. Totally. <laughs> With your waste-free lifestyle, how do you date? How do guys come to do you? I mean, how do guys treat you? Yeah, people read about me or learn about me and they're like, God, you must not have any friends. You must be totally single. <laughs> yeah, like, right. you loser. And I was like, actually, not the case at all. My last boyfriend, actually, I met because he read my blog and wrote to me in an email. He was no like, way. hey, I like what you do. Let's be friends. Like, fast forward and we dated. Wow. Um, and I'm single now, but it's funny because when I go out on dates, we'll go out and I'll be like, hey, can I have this cocktail, but can you do it without a straw? And the guy will be like, me too, me too. And oh, so it's cool. like, okay. oh, so fun. they try to impress me by trying to be zero waste too. That's oh, awesome. Nice. You're probably a good influence right. on yeah. me for sure. Because that's what we wanted to add. So no straw when you drink, but when you eat, do you eat with like real utensils? Yeah. Yeah, so when I go to a restaurant, like I can't control kind of what they do, but I can control what I do. So I ask for things without a straw. I use reusable napkins, or if they have a paper napkin, I take it home and compost it. So it's just mm -hmm. little tiny switches. Steps. Yeah, it's awesome. super simple. Oh, awesome, well, wow. you wow. also started your own company, the Simply Company. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So when I started my blog, Trashes for Tossers, I was writing about living a zero waste lifestyle. And a lot of people would write to me and say, hey, I love these products that you're making yourself, but like I have a busy life, I have friends and a job and all this stuff, so I don't have time to make my own products myself. Mm -hmm. And they were like, do you have anything that you can suggest for me to buy in stores that are like the products you're making? And I went into stores and I started looking at products. And with beauty products, there are a lot of really sustainable alternatives, but the same isn't true for cleaning products. And when I started doing more research, I learned that there are over 85,000 industrial chemicals that are used in products, and mm -hmm. most of them aren't tested for safety before they're mm -hmm. released out into the market. So Whoa. there are things that are like carcinogenic, and they yeah. use things mm -hmm. like formaldehyde, right. like disgusting. And when I Looked further, I learned that cleaning product manufacturers in the US aren't legally required to tell you what's in their product on the Absolutely. product packaging. Wow. Yeah, so we have no idea what we're buying. And I was like, this is not fair. I've been making my own products for years and they work and they're safe. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to quit my job and start wow. a company making products that I feel like we all deserve that are yeah. safe. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You are remarkable. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you are so remarkable. So what are some of the steps that we all can take uh, you know, to begin reducing our trash impact, what can we do? Yeah, people think it's really hard to yeah. live a sustainable lifestyle or that it takes a ton of time or a ton of money, but it's actually, it's really just baby steps. And so a really simple first thing is you can use actually a reusable water bottle or I carry a mason jar everywhere with me. So I have my mason jar that I use for coffee or for water, or you can even use it for things like leftovers. If you go to a restaurant, you just plop them in there. Oh, so that's I a really easy jars. first step. Yeah, me too. And it's chic and, and cute, really cute, It's, so, right? cute. it's yeah. so much cuter than plastic water bottles. And if totally gotten free coffee and I'm like, hey, can you put this in my mason jar? And they're like, oh, just take it. It's fine. Oh, Good to know. Yeah. Well, thank awesome. you so much for yeah. being here, Lauren. Oh, you. And sharing your tips on how we can all help reduce, reuse, and recycle. You know when you get a package delivered in the mail and you're so excited to rip it open? And then you find these. I never know what to do with them, so I, I usually throw them away. Not so fast, Jeannie. These are called silica gel packets. They come in most package containers and are totally recyclable. But you won't believe what else they can do. Yeah. I promise. Once you see, you will be shouting, what the gel? 
These little silica gel packets contain silicon dioxide, which dries out anything around them. So they are super useful. Hmm. While they are non-toxic and not poisonous, they do pose a choking hazard, so it's best to keep them away from your little ones. Oh, Got goodness, it. enough with the chit chat. Can okay. we start the segment? <laughs> I have a big problem over here, okay? okay? All right, Lonnie, what's the matter? Well, come and help me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I dropped my phone in water. And I guess it's time to do the rice tricks. I'm gonna put it in here, you know, right? Lonnie. What? What the jelly are you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. We all heard that putting a wet phone in rice will help save it, but since silica gel dries out everything around it, you have a much better chance of saving your phone if you put it in a jar of those packets instead. Whoa! Mm -hmm. See? Yep. Tamara, that's awesome advice. Everybody has experience dropping their phone in water. So yes. what else can silica gel be used for? Well, go over there to Tamar and see. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, it's so gross. Uh. Like I grab my gym bag on the go and when I open it, it's all stank and moldy. I don't even know what to do, pew. Oh. Tamar, what the gel are you talking about? <laughs> There's a super easy fix for that. Check this out. Hey, Ty, these gel packets are so absorbent <laughs> that they prevent bacteria and mold from growing, but they can also get rid of nasty odors. <gasps> mm -hmm. Come in, Make put sure them in. to pop these in your gym bag and you'll smell pretty in no time. Oh, that's a good idea! Yes, it is! Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. genius! <laughs> So these are packed with a lot of great uses. Yes! <laughs> Lonnie! Okay, Tam, yeah. uh, <laughs> what else can they do? Here, immediately, Tay, there we go. What else, what else? Oh boy, oh, hey, oh my gosh, this is so awkward, you guys. I was just about to shave my legs. Well, excuse me. Ow, oh my gosh. This razor is rusted and dull. I could have cut myself. Uh-oh. Adrian, don't freak out. What's sitting on the sink? It's silica packages. What, the gel? <laughs> After each shave, extend the life of your razor blades by putting them in some Tupperware with your few silica packets. They will absorb any excess moisture and keep those blades fresh, avoiding any nicks or cuts. And just like that, another situation gelled over. Thanks, Tim.